I was planning on writing an episode on Stephen Chow, which I still plan on doing. But with a new film on the horizon, I want to spend some time on one of Chow's masterpiece. The King of Comedy. Don't be fooled by the title, though. It's a depressing film with a thin disguise of comedy. Even as a kid, I realized this movie is not funny. But little do I know how sad this film really is. To talk about this film, we first need to talk about Stephen Chow. During the 90s, there are two major stars in Hong Kong cinema: Jackie Chan and Stephen Chow. One does action, the other does comedy. Both started from the very bottom as extras, and eventually climbed their way up to the top. And as a sign of respect, they also made cameos in each other's movies. In the case of Chow, he spent eight years being extras in various TV stations before finally landed a starring role, and spent another decade to climb to the top, and became a director. Throughout the years, Chow exhibits some amazing physical acting talent in a style similar to Jim Carrey. His over-the-top expressions and unpredictable comedy won the hearts of people everywhere. Though his film didn't have much impact in the West, it is hard for a foreign comedy to travel that far. But he is still successful in the Asian market. And at the height of his fame, Stephen Chow directed his magnum opus, The King of Comedy. The King of Comedy is a 1999 Hong Kong comedy. Written and co-directed by Stephen Chow, it follows the story of a failed actor who, despite his passion and talent, never has the opportunity to grow bigger. Sometimes his ambitions gets in the way. Okay. Other times, the industry's cruel attitude towards extras forces him to disrupt the film set. A few moments later. One eternity later. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting, and they had to hire a new one. Everyone looks down on him. Even the set coordinator denies him of his lunch repeatedly. Towards the end, however, his passion finally affects a fellow star. Yet at the last minute, he is replaced because he doesn't have enough star power. For the purpose of this video, we will ignore the third act of the film. It's an obvious tacked-on addition, likely forced by the studio, so the film can be released as a feel-good comedy around Chinese holidays. That's all. This film might as well be a tragedy. Sorry. The film title, King of Comedy, is a marketing ploy to draw people in. People saw Stephen Chow and expected comedy, but in the film, 
the main character never achieves his goal of being a famous film actor. He's not even a comedic actor. The king of comedy is not the character. It's Stephen Chow. And this film is about Chow, literally. The film draws many inspirations from Chow's early career. Pissing off a major star, being hated because he's just an extra, all these stories are based on real events. I keep saying this film feels really sad to me, it's because this film is partly real. The scene I want to talk about is this one. The bald man here is the set coordinator, played by Meng Da. He's a veteran actor, started his career way back in the 70s. But instead of a has been, someone who passed the prime, during the release of this film, he was at the height of his popularity. That is because throughout his career, he frequently got cast as a supporting actor, notably a recurring support in Chow's film. With Chow being the most popular comedian in Hong Kong, Meng Da also broke through and became famous. Audience love him, they call him Uncle Tap. That is not to say Tap lacks any talent. In fact, he's a very versatile actor. He can be angry and abusive, like in this film, or cowardly and kind, like in All for the Winner. His performance in Portland Street Blues is often credited as one of his best. But audience respect Chow much more than Uncle Tap. Most people by 1999 are calling Chow the godfather of comedy. That's a few rank higher than Uncle. Knowing this, watching him yell at Chow adds a deep layer of meaning. Because not only is Chow younger and more successful, he also can't really act. Not for dramas. Don't get me wrong, Chow is a great comedic actor, with great physical acting talent. But unlike Jim Carrey, who has Chow to have range, with roles in The Truman Show and Eternal Sunshine, Chow never displayed this type of talent. He's incapable of more nuanced acting. I suspect Chow himself understands this. Hence why this line exists. Throughout all the interviews, Uncle Tap displays remarkable maturity and composure. But everyone is human. I wonder, when Tap was working with Chow, did he ever wonder, is this it? Is this how I peak? But the story goes a bit deeper than this. The role of the coordinator, the one played by Uncle Tad, was originally intended for Alex Mann, an other well-respected Hong Kong veteran actor. Unlike Uncle Tad, who is popular and lives in the shadow of Chow, Mann was never popular. He is skilled, don't get me wrong, he is a star, but he was never a superstar. Supposedly, the filming of The King of Comedy was delayed last minute. But no one bothered to inform Alex Mann. After a few hours of waiting, Alex Mann got angry and left the production entirely. Sometimes, life imitates art. Had he played the role, it would be a veteran actor being angry towards someone who seemed to have less talent. But in reality, Mann is not even important enough to be notified of the delay of the film shoot. For those of you who don't know, I myself am a filmmaker. 
I graduated from film school and have been dabbling at the fringe of the film industry since, doing motion graphics and assistant editing for documentaries, making my own short films and sending them to film festivals. It's an industry that corrodes your ego, files down your arrogance and confidence. Every day, I sit in front of my computer with my script open, thinking, "Is this it?" And there are tens of thousands of us out there, sitting in the corner of a film set, dealing with coffees and garbage dumping, being extras that will appear in the film for five frames in total. On the surface, we are creating dreams and fantasies for people to see, but underneath, the industry is powered by people with broken dreams. Almost everyone on set is thinking, "Is this it?" <laughs>